Okay, we are rolling. I'm not going to do my usual Hulk Hogan chant today because, you know, it's a very sad occasion. Some very bad news in the world of boxing and, you know, the in the world of life, really. You know, and that's the death of Pernell Whitaker, who was tragically in a car accident incident and passed on at age 55. So prayers and thoughts go out to Pernell Whitaker's family, obviously, his children, his friends, his fans, you know. It's a real kick in the teeth, isn't it? Just shows us how delicate life is, you know, and how we put um, so many things that aren't important, really, into priorities. And when things happen like this, it's a reminder that you know, what we think is really important is not really the case at all. The trivial things compared with this. I mean, you've got at the weekend a big fight. I'm sure there'll be tributes from Manny Pacquiao and Keith Furman and the, the, the whole event. And of course, Furman is angry. Pacquiao is angry. The fans are angry. Everyone's so worried. Can Manny Pacquiao maintain his status in the sport? Can Keith Furman return and and get back to being a top welterweight again? There's so, so much worry, you know? But it really doesn't matter, does it? Not when you compare it with situations like this. So, you know, you, you get lost for words, don't you? You know, life just sometimes hits you with you know, a spanner in the works. For me, I always seem to wake up and find out these things. And it's ironic that a lot of fans in America found out about this when they woke up. Of course, I'm in the UK and I was having a sleep and I woke up to find this news. The irony is just, well, it's troubling. Pernell Whitaker as a fighter. Tremendous entertainer. And somehow he managed to pull it off in a unique way. Usually defensive fighters are like Marmite, aren't they? You either like them or you hate them. Very few people, though, actually find pure defensive fighters, shall we say, entertaining. As great as I thought, and I have big, big respect for Floyd Mayweather and Bernard Hopkins... As much as I think of them and admire their achievements, they didn't really entertain me, right? In terms of, shall we say, drama, right? There was not much entertainment, and partly that was due to their defensive style. I don't know what it is. Every boxing fan is different. Some people love the pure boxer. Some people like it. I kind of like it all to a certain extent, but I watch different fighters for different reasons, not always entertainment reasons. I've always been a body shots kind of guy, to be honest with you. I like seeing movement slowed down and then seeing the fight, you know, draw out from there. But Pernell Whitaker, as a defensive fighter, right, what made him unique and will always make him unique. And this, this is what I think about more than his achievements. And his achievements was vast. He was a four division world champion. 40 fights that he won as a professional boxer. Great amateur, right? Olympian, right? Then two controversial fights against two other legendary fighters, Oscar De La Hoya and Chavez, the great Mexican. Many people felt Purnell won them fights against a terrific legend. And at the time a megastar, a super young talent in Oscar De La Hoya. It takes some ability to leave the ring with people believing you beat a fresh, young Oscar De La Hoya. But let me just say this. Usually in boxing, the crowd goes wild when a big punch is landed. When Mike Tyson lands a punch that rocks his opponent to his boots, as Jim Watts would say. The crowd goes up in a roar, right? Very rarely, though, do they cheer Bernard Hopkins smothering his guy in clinching 
or blocking a shot, right? It's usually the action, or I should say the offensive action, that gets the crowd into a frenzy. People used to cheer Pernell Whitaker, avoiding shots on the ropes. It looked so spectacular, it was entertaining. A bit like, you, you know when you watch The Matrix, and it was fascinating, just to see the bad guys miss, right? But they made it look so entertaining, cinematic. Pernell Whitaker was that in the ring. I didn't really cheer anything that Floyd Mayweather really defended against Manny Pacquiao. But when I used to watch Pernell Whitaker, and a guy used to throw a very good combination punches in bunches and Purnell used to make the guy look like he was throwing the punch in slow motion and do all this sort of amazing reflex defensive work on the ropes or in a variety of positions in the ring to be honest and I found myself cheering more for the guy that was defending and avoiding shots than the guy that was throwing that is unique you don't usually see that in boxing. And that is what stands out for me about Pernell Whitaker more than his titles and achievements. Unique styles, let's face it, unique styles make people remember you in boxing. Not necessarily always your record, right? You could go throughout the history. Muhammad Ali, his style makes people remember him probably more than his achievements. Most people can't tell you his record. Casual fans. But they know what he looks like. They know his presence, right? <sighs> Jake LaMotta was another one. People can't tell you his record, but they know the guy was a warrior, right? In his own way. Pernell Whitaker. As I said, I'd forgotten his record. I just was I just remember the style. I had to go on Wikipedia to sort of remember exactly the achievements. Because his style was so blindingly spectacular in, in the defensive sense. That that is what my memory is all about when I think about the guy. Right? Of course, Manny Pacquiao is the same. In his own way. Floyd Mayweather is the same. The difference a little bit with Floyd Mayweather is... His personality in terms of all access. And 24-7. Sort of is more entertaining than his ring style. Right? But... Not exactly in the style of Pernell Whitaker. But I did find one fight of Floyd Mayweather's in the defensive sense entertaining, and that was his victory over Canelo Alvarez. Moments where Canelo missed so badly and hit the ropes, and Floyd had the audacity to stand there and look at Canelo and look at the ropes and more or less ask the rope, are you okay? Because <laughs> that shot was meant for me, but it hit you, Mr. Rope. That is typical Purnell Whittaker, the audacity of it, right? That got a massive cheer from the crowd. You remember that fight? That got a massive cheer from the crowd. Floyd Mayweather that night, it, there was, the way he held himself, the assurance of that style just took me back to Pernell Whitaker and some of the fights I saw during the 90s. Some of the clips I remember being shown, I think it was late at night on BBC, about Pernell Whitaker, when a world-class fighter like a Roger Mayweather would throw a shot and it would look for all the world like it's landing and it almost looked like on purpose Pernell would let it get to within a slight inch and then move out the way and look at Roger Mayweather as if to say, is that all you got? The assurance was just spectacular. Take supreme confidence to do that. And the beauty about life is, you know, nothing ever really dies as long as someone remembers it. And people will remember Pernell Whitaker's style. They're all talking about him today, right? He is alive in one sense. You know, Linda Lee, Bruce Lee's uh, wife, once said, so many people speculate about how Bruce Lee died. But she preferred to remember him how he lived. People are going to talk about for a long time Pernell Whitaker and the accident that took his life tragically. 
I would rather remember the man and his style, how he fought. You know, so again, this video is about perspective. I've used a lot of different fighters to compare and contrast with Pernell Whitaker rather than talk specifically about a man. And that really is the ultimate tribute because it shows influence. It shows influence. Floyd was influenced by Pernell Whitaker. Fighters that don't fight like Pernell Whitaker respect him. That is, you know, they say impersonation is the best form of flattery. I'm not saying those guys impersonate. You know, you've got to have your own style in boxing. But influence, I think, is even more powerful than impersonation. In other words, someone that just impersonates a fighter is like a copy. But someone that in, is inspired by that fighter to then go on and become who they are, that is even more powerful than impersonation, in my view, or imitation. So, let's just, it's about just enjoying, you know, relax. When you watch a fight, sport, whatever, you know, try sometimes to not you know, automatically want to troll another fan who's a fan of another fighter. Try not to scream at the other guy fighting. You know, let's respect but enjoy the art of boxing. You know, because when all said and done, we know most times when the bell is, you know, when the fight is over, the two fighters embrace and respect each other. So we should do that too because there is much more important things in life life itself is more important but Pernell Whitaker's style his influence will live on no question about it so if you can what I would like you to do today is just have 10 minutes silence and imagine you know the ring bell ding ding you know 10 times going like it did like it did at many occasions for Muhammad Ali and other legends, because Pernell Whitaker, Hall of Famer, certainly belongs in the mix, in the pantheon of great fighters. Not just achievers, but memorable styles. Because style is, in boxing, great when it's mixed with substance. That is when you are remembered, when people remember your style Sometimes even more than your substance. But Pernell Whitaker, just have a look at his achievements. He has both. God bless his soul. And thanks for listening. This is Champions of Champions Boxing Talk. And that's all I've got to say on this tragic day.